Hi, good afternoon. My name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with a colleague by the name of Eric Agnero, a gentleman I've gotten to know in the past year or so, a former CNN reporter from Africa. Uh, Eric is from the Ivory Coast, and from there and other parts of Africa and other parts of the world, he reported for CNN and also for Voice of America. We're lucky enough right now to have him in our community. And um, today, as a couple of times ago, we're talking about, again, an update on the current war and the situation in Ukraine and Russia. Today, we're going to have a discussion essentially about what's going on on the ground in Ukraine and in Russia with an attempt to talk about the facts of the situation, trying to steer clear of the propaganda that has been coming at us daily, nonstop. 24 hours a day. Uh, so here's Eric, and so I want to ask the first question about what's going on. And here we have the map again, and here is Ukraine, which is the largest country in Europe, correct? The second largest country. Se what's the Europe. first? Russia? Uh, 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 if Russia is, you know, considered <laughs> European. Of course it is. You know, it so, is. I mean, know. people don't seem to yeah. know that, but it is. <laughs> Russia is a European country, um, it, which goes uh, to the... Uh, um, Ural Mountains, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From, okay, but it is a, um, a European country, although quite different than the rest of Europe. And this is Ukraine, the second largest country in Europe. And this is where the current war is occurring right now as we speak. So what's going on? What do you think? Yeah, what I think is, you know, uh, uh, the Western medias, meaning, you know, the uh, NATO medias and NATO uh, um, uh, a word is claiming that Vladimir Putin is losing the war. Okay, wait a minute. Now, you're, the NATO countries are here, yeah. right, on the border, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And Ukraine is not at this moment in NATO. NATO. Okay, great. And, then, okay. you know, Russia doesn't even want <laughs> Ukraine no. to be no. a NATO country. Right. But we have the feeling that uh, the Russians are, you know, losing the war uh, because, you know, uh, they couldn't seize Kiev. And then couldn't the get, capital, you know, the capital, and couldn't you know seize the whole country. Ukraine is a large country, right? So that to start with, but depending, of course, on the tank you are embedded in, you know, during this war, you will see if Russia or Ukraine is winning. But when you look from the Russian perspective, you have to ask yourself what was the objective right, of Russia. Right. And if people had listened to Putin, Putin they would have he known. stated the objective, yeah. or did he not? Did he? Did he did many times. Many times. Many okay, times. so what, again, according to the Russian perspective and Vladimir Putin, what was his objective? One, he said that clearly it was to demilitarize, meaning to reduce, you know, the military capacity of Ukraine, but because it was seeing Russia, I mean, Ukraine as a threat. And then I will explain what went on even a few days before the Ru Russians made the move. And then second objective was to denazify. That's what they said. said. Yeah, that's what he said. Right. Even though, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that, you know, the Azov Battalion and the Nazis is referring to a real, you know, Nazis just people that don't like. Okay, you know, so that needs a little bit of explanation. Yeah, we will get there. So okay. the two objectives were one to, you know, uh, uh, reduce the military capacity of uh, Ukraine. Did they have big armies? Ukraine? Yeah. I mean, uh, enough to uh, to create to worry. trouble. Yeah. To worry. And then the the denazification. But we have to know that since 2021, Zelensky in March 2021, signed a decree saying that he was going east to get back Crimea. Okay, point out where Crimea is. Yeah, Crimea is uh, here. Okay. You know, it's and a peninsula. Was, yeah, Crimea yeah. is here, and then he was also coming to get you know this region back because the in uh, in um, against the uh, Minsk Accords. Means one. Okay, get, right. We have to explain that though. Yeah. Okay, right. go ahead. So. Everybody knew that, you know, uh, 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 since then, there were uh, uh, some movement of troops from the Ukrainian government. Where to? Down to the east. Okay. And here. From the Ukrainian government. From the Ukrainian government. And who arms them? 
But well, I mean, of course, they have uh, their own military and mm -hmm. probably, you know, had some assistance from, you know, NATO, NATO countries. And the United States. But so far, no problem. And then around the 16th of February, 2022, of, 2022 uh -huh. many intelligence sources, even the U.S. US intelligences, European intelligences, and then according to a book from uh, a French author who was a NATO a functionary, uh, um, uh, Jacques Beau, who... Beau. Beau, yeah. Uh, it was clear that around the 16, the Ukrainians were ready to make a move. Where in to? The region. Where to? Eastern region and Crimea. That region, particular region, where you have the, the Donbass region. Donbass, right. And these regions, of course, have, uh, have, you know, declare their um, autonomy, independence. Why? Okay, so show us again Donbass. Yeah, it's... Okay, it's, right on the border of the Russian yeah, Federation. Donetsk, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, uh, Mariupol and all these, you know, you know, uh, cities. You know, this region, which is where, you know, uh, now the... Um, the, Russian troops are? Yeah, the Russian troops are massed now. Okay, well, well, wait a minute. But those places are Russian speakers, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're Russian speakers, and that's why, you know, when in 2014, you know, there was this trouble around there, there were some, you know, two uh, negotiations. First was the Minsk one. Minsk agreements. The Minsk agreement, even the Russians were not part of it. The Russians didn't even, uh, were not even mentioned in the agreement. All they wanted is like to give some autonomy. I mean, it was about linguistic and cultural, uh -huh. you know, you know, uh, religious matters. maybe. Yeah, matters. Yeah. But you know, uh, the Ukrainian didn't did. I mean, uh, uh, violated this first accord. What was the accord to give those regions autonomy? The Russian yeah, I speaking, mean, like more aut autonomy mm -hmm. and you know, cultural because they are uh, Russian. Russian speaking, mm -hmm. you know, right. region. But. Kiev wanted to uh, take them over, yeah, over like uh, in impose, you know, the uh, the language from the the central government, mm -hmm. opposing, you know, they um, they uh, their you know uh, their will to become more you know autonomous. And okay. So we won't get into the details of these yeah, accords, right. but uh, uh, Ukraine didn't respect that you know agreement. And what did they, they went do? To, they went to war. And then you know they couldn't they couldn't win, so they went back to a second round of negotiation where it was clear that you know you shouldn't you know give trouble to this region, but really the uh, the the uh, Ukrainian government didn't you know really accept that. So many times they they used this paramilitary paramilitary uh, paramilitary organization. Among them, yeah. the, uh, as, uh, the Azov Battalion. battalion. What, is, what is the Azov Battalion? The Azov Battalion is par paramilitary, you know, forces because you know the you know the the Ukrainian government is not very much uh, uh, geared to fight within the cities. They have like the conventional army that mm -hmm. will come with huge, you know, tanks and things. But the Azov Battalion is, is was used in this war because it was more a guerrilla type of uh, war, uh, you know? But the Azov Battalion comes from a long, I mean, that, that history of this battalion and, and the forces, paramilitary forces, such as uh, the Azov Battalion come from a long time ago during the war against USSR, you know? Wait, we, what war against USSR? Yeah, because USSR at some point had like right. the whole region. And right. then Ukrainian also wanted some national, there was a nationalism, uh, Ukrainian nationalism that was, you know, kind of against the central USSR, you know, uh -huh. uh, management of the region. And then I, I uh, if I... And they were kind of associated, at least in somebody's mind, with the Nazi Germans of World War II. At least they've been accused of that. Yeah. Right? But I, I will... I, if you go into history, it's more because they're against, you know, everybody, so to speak, but, you know, against the Jewish people because at some point in the upper 30s. management of yeah. USSR, Ministry of uh, Interior, 
uh, uh, at the time of you know this confrontation Stalin, between yeah, yeah yeah were Jewish mm -hmm. and and they, they were you know seen by these nationalists you know uh, from Ukraine as the respons responsible of what was happening to them. Yeah. So they had that, you know, hate against them, uh, not particularly because they hate all the uh, Jewish people. Even uh, recently, I think, not like in 2018, they, they've even asked Israel I to know. give them compensation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. So, so yeah, it's yeah. just like uh, a, a patchwork of ideologies with mostly around uh, some kind of strong, you know, nationalism. Ukrainian, Ukrainian nation nationalism. nationalism. Okay. And they're, they're more like ultra, ultra uh, right. right, you okay. know. But, you know, of course, by uh, naming, you know, the Jewish people that were in charge of that ministry of um, uh, interior at the time of USSR, you know, their hatred <laughs> was like... Right, and it was interpreted. Interpreted as, as, as nazi. But, yeah. of course, well, historian yeah. will, you know, will argue, debate, about, argue that. about that, yeah. but, you know, it's mostly far right, you know, uh, right. movements. Right, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And there, the the Russians defined that struggle then as a denazification. Yes. That's where that word comes from. Correct. Yes. Of course, it's yeah. war. You know, yeah. everybody uses a war that is strong propaganda. enough. You know, yeah, propaganda. Right. So for 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 the Russians, that was good enough. You know, to mm -hmm. also rally some of the, uh, you know the people around the world and against them because definitely uh, you know they were seen as a threat you know and then they were toward all, russia yeah, towards russia of course because they've been very much you know uh, um, active in the donbass region you know in a uh, kind of a civil war yes right so when around uh, february 16 the russian had like the confirmation that you know where did uh, they get it the uh, from all the intelligence even the you know u.s you know, intelligence u.s intelligence not even Russian intelligence, even the U.S. intelligence, you know, European intelligence, you know, you, you go to many of these organizations that are monitoring the region. Mm -hmm. They knew that. And that's even why Joe Biden was so certain that yeah, Russia mm -hmm. will attack. Around what, what date? Around the 16th of February. Uh -huh. okay. So, you know, and then it's even around that time that finally Vladimir Putin uh, uh, you know, said yes to the request from this uh, republic, so-called, you know, independent Donbass. republic, Donbass. He, he recognized, not declared their independence, as, you know, the media are, uh, you know, uh, portraying. Right. Accepted through a request from this republic, went to uh, the Duma. The Duma is the Russian, Russian parliament. parliament. I mean, yeah. I don't even think people know that there is a parliament yeah. in, in Russia. So, so then Vladimir Putin, it's just in February that Vladimir Putin uh, recognizes republics. As independent. Independent. But not part of Russia. Not part of Russia. Right. And then, then sign an agreement with them as to defend them, like military agreement, uh -huh. so that with regard to the, uh, I think it's a, a, U, a UN, uh, like uh, uh, Article 51 of the UN Charter, uh -huh. they can assist a country that is, you know, uh -huh. in need, you mm -hmm. know, according to that uh, 51, uh, I mean, article of, uh, of the UN Charter. So uh, the Russians quite made things, you know, legally. That's what you know, they when say. It, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what. That's, <laughs> that's what they, what they say. say. Right, but right. that what was in the mind of uh, you know Vladimir Putin. So as to know what Vladimir Putin and I mean what Russia because we tend to you know, I know very much call I know, you know, I know. Which what is Russia military was was doing around Kiev. It's interesting. It, at that time there were no you know literally no uh, 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 Ukrainian troop at the borders. No, because you. they were all. In uh, you know, the eastern Donbass. region, ready to take over the Donbas region and Crimea. Crimea That's, is already Russian. Though. Yeah, but you know, yeah. but it was like I mean, uh, like if you bring war over there, you might be able to you know get right. down there, depending on. So, the Russians, according to some military you know experts, yeah, Russian went to, Russian experts, no, even European uh, experts okay. went to Kiev to you know to uh, to fix. I mean people's mind and uh, forces there. So people will think that they are in fact trying to, but it was to keep the, you know, uh, to cut Kiev from, from uh, these uh, elements that were fighting 
ready to fight in the East. So, but wait a minute. So you're saying yeah. that the encirclement of Kiev yeah. was deliberate to kind of divert attention away from their real plan to With, get the East. Yeah, to is East. That like, correct? I mean, yes. Is it's that what like, Putin yeah, said? Yeah, is that it's what is being you know po I mean analyzed and you know that's what people are saying. But it's definitely what Russia was doing because. Russia never said that they will get... Okay, that's important. Russia never said they wanted all of Ukraine? So it's two philosophies. It's yeah. because the West is not reading right. how First, the Russians right. do war. War for the Russians is a continuum of politics, you know, rather yeah. than the West, you know, we come... We, 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 we do negotiations, and then if it doesn't go, boom, we attack. Russian use that as a way to also have a leverage on, uh, on, on, on the negotiation and, and on, ah. on Kiev to, to be able to, uh, you know, tame down their, you know, what they, they, they Did wanted. Did they bomb Kiev? Uh, the Russians? Yeah. Uh, Russia, according to even the Pentagon, Russia did in one month what the coalition did in one day in, uh, in, uh, in Iraq. Okay, so it took him a month. S yeah, no, so it means that if Russia really wanted to destroy Kiev, they would have sent like bombs. Like if Russia really wanted to, uh, to kill civilians in mass, to bombard hospitals, they could, they could have done it like with, done you know, it more. With, right. with even more precision because they have you know uh, this kind of weapons. Mm -hmm. But the idea is was to cut whatever they bombarded in Kiev and around Kiev was like military command, you know, uh, uh, chain of supply. Ah, uh, uh huh. And then when it comes even to my, uh, the, uh, that hospital that they said was uh, was bombarded, right. uh, on the seventh. Two days before the of, of February, right. two days before that operation, the Russian diplomat at the UN was doing his daily briefing on what was going on. He said that that hospital was even evacuated by the the, 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 Russians. the, the no no the, uh, the Ukrainians, Ukrainians. Ah. because it's a very good place when you see it from there you can see, like you have a very good view of what's going on so. Uh -huh it would have been logical for a, a defending force to occupy that. Mm -hmm. But it was said by the Russians that that place was evacuated by the, the, um, Ukrainian. the, the Ukrainian. On the, second, the, the following day, an independent, it, you have to put oh, that in yeah, bracket, right. uh, Russian media went there to uh, interview people that uh -huh. you know, were evacuated. The Russian media did? Yeah. yeah. So it was quite clear, at least in the mind of the Russians, that they were going to attack a place that was not full of civilians, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I'm not sure that they would have done that just to, you know, blow up a hospital with civilians over there. Well, it that's was, what's being said. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, and everybody knows that, mm -hmm. it, was, it was occupied by the, you know, the Ukrainian forces and uh, you know, and, and, and the Azov battalion because it happened in uh, in uh, Mariupol, right? Uh huh. And which is so where? And Mariupol yes. is right there, which is in the Donbass. Yeah, yeah. Put, put it that way. The, and the, what yeah. your argument is that the Donbass at this moment have been recognized by the Russians. Yes, at as this moment. Independent. Independent. But and not then, part of Ukraine not or part Russia. Of Russia. Okay. And then Russia even had a treaty with these republics right. as to be able to assist them militarily. Okay. Yeah, as like uh, for what they see as an aggression to an independent country. But even Russia, Vladimir Putin accept Russia. that Russia and Vladimir Putin signed that, you know, ac I mean, recognition of their independence in February. Hmm. Not like that he... He did uh -huh. that long time right, ago. It's right, just right. because the situation was pushing him, I, I believe, to do that. So, well, he, he also says it was pushing him. Yeah. He right? kept the he kept you know Kiev like. So this is what is called military strategy. What you're talking military about. Military strategy. And if you'll notice, there's not one Western reporter who even mentions that there was a military strategy, as there is in every war. Yeah, because you know it's it's two two uh, different uh, philosophy of war. Like what? In the West, we go, we, we, we get on the capital city, we destroy everything, and then we... Like Baghdad. Uh, yeah, like Baghdad.
But the Russians don't do that. The Russians, you know, they just like surrounded the capital to cut any link from the capital to the battalions and then armed forces that were fighting in the east as to weaken them, mm -hmm. keep, you know, the attention of the world and the attention of Kiev. Because Boy, wasn't Vlad it? Because Zelensky was, fe uh, people in the West thought that, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin was coming to get Zelensky, <laughs> Zelensky in Kiev. No, he was, uh, uh, according to uh, strat uh, you know, uh, military, you know, uh, strategists, it Even the Pentagon. To, it, it was to, you know, you know uh, uh, divert attention and keep the forces weak. I mean, that's, uh, okay. So what you're talking about was you have, through your research yeah. and through your look at the facts, mm -hmm. that uh, this was, on the Russian side, rather a limited war. Yes, it's okay. even, they call it an operation because That's they, they say that it, yeah, it's okay. the war started earlier, yeah, according right. to the Russians. And then to them, the, 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 the war didn't even start on the, the <laughs> when they attacked. It started earlier because right. they knew that, you know, the, the, uh, the people from Kiev, I mean, the government of Kiev was about to attack, you know, uh, um, uh, that region. Okay, so before, okay, so d is there... Yeah, and then... Okay. And then... It's interesting to see that the European, when, you know, uh, uh, Kiev was forced to negotiate, forced to negotiate, Hasn't because you know, they had to it? negotiate. So yeah. They went to negotiate, like, in, I think it was in Belarus, which yeah. is Where the Belarus? first round of negotiation, which is said to be pro-Russian anyway. It started a little, you know, it was difficult at the beginning, but ultimately Zelensky said he's agreed to, to negotiate. Yeah, for a when while. he said that, as soon as he said that, the Europeans said, we're bringing you a lot of, you know, weapons. <laughs> weapons. So the real issue is now, yeah. the real question is, are we going to, to have peace over there? And that peace depends not necessarily on uh, Zelensky, because if Zelensky is uh, uh, intelligent, he will know that. And he pushing. seems to be intelligent, he but, will, he but he also seems to be blocked. Yeah, because, you know, it's the, the European NATO is doing a proxy war and using Zelensky and his country in this proxy his war. So um, I bet he receives his orders from, uh, from NATO. Or because Washington. It's a real confrontation. Because I think there is disunity within, the, within NATO. But, okay, so let's go on. All right, so if this is a limited war on Russia's part, mm -hmm. had, who's winning the limited war at this moment? You, who knows, I guess, right? Yeah, to me... But the, but the yeah. West, or the United States, seems to be saying over and over that, that uh, Russia is failing. Yeah. I don't think so. Because, it it, because, because they're concentrated here, correct? If, if, if the objective, according to the West and NATO, was to take all, to of take Ukraine, all Ukraine, then maybe then Vladimir... Failing, yeah, right. uh, but according to what Vladimir Putin himself said, this was not the intention. Right. The intention, I'm pretty sure, is like to bring Kiev to its knees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. have them give up <laughs> on, you know, these. Okay, so that's very important because I saw Zelensky today, or I read about mm -hmm. Zelensky today on Consortium News, which is a website. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that at first he would have made an agreement to kind of allow the East to be independent or, you know, quasi independent. Yeah. He would have allowed them, the Russians, to keep Crimea as long as he could remain the leader of Western Ukraine. But somehow that has been jettisoned. Because Europe and NATO failed to, you know, seize many occasions to resolve right. that issue. First, look what, what was done in Chechnya. Yeah. The Russians gave you know, autonomy to Chechnya. Did they? Oh, yeah, the Chechen have even their own army, I mean, like National Guard and things. But now they, they're fighting with Russia uh -huh. in this war. But, you know, Russia was smart enough to say, okay, this guy want, I mean, autonomy. We'll keep them autonomy. Who? Which one? Che the, Chechen, yeah. the Chechen, you know, independentists and so. So it made, like, Chechnya feel like now they have autonomy. So they tame down their thing. That's what, you know, Zelensky was, was supposed to do according to the Minsk Accord. It wasn't even about seceding. It wasn't even about being 
independent republic. They were just saying that we have some cultural, you know, uh, 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 link to Russia. Let us keep our cultural language, I mean, yeah. our languages. Let us keep our... Minsk too was about giving that. Even Minsk too was not even, uh, you know, uh, 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 patronized or sponsored by Russia. Russia was not even part of that accord. It was, okay, up to Kiev to maneuver very well with this republic okay. that would have yeah. accepted some kind of autonomy. But in, in, in fact, the real, the real uh, you know, aim for, you know, was to, to uh, go further east. Okay, so... So what we're saying, I think, um, is that if it is a limited war, if that's correct, mm -hmm. as you seem through your research, it's not just that you yep. cook this up in your yep. mind, that could be achieved fairly soon. Mm. However, what you're also saying that the West's objective are maybe not limited war. The as, you know, the, the next month and weeks will tell us what's going on because, you know, well, now we have to get... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the thing that bothers me yeah. is the fact that there is no discussion from any of the information that comes from the United States mm. that there's any thought of peace because I think that the United States and NATO's strategy has changed is to really drive the Russians out of Crimea and out of the east. And if that's true, then what that means is... The, the war will be long? Are you, it's a world war Yeah. at that point. Yeah. Because Russia's not going to stand for it. Yeah. And uh, like we have to be very uh, worried about what will happen next. And how? what do you think? How long is this? Because they're arming. I mean, the Polish are arming. Other NATO countries are sending arms. My bet is that you know it's going to be a very long conflict where you know uh, you know like Afghanistan, yeah, like, like Afghanistan, unless you know between uh, who and who. I mean, uh, uh, maybe unless we reach an agreement, Kiev will always continue to push towards you know because it's been uh, pushed by uh, the West. We'll see. Because, you know, it's very... What is your... I mean, there's a huge convoy now, mm. today, eight miles long from Russia through this area. Where are they going? Here? Yeah. This is where, you know... Okay, so it, the tr but the trucks are going to the eastern part. Of, yeah. And what is, what's the plan? What is he doing? The plan is now that they recognize these independent, uh, you know, places, they're not no longer part of, you know, Ukraine. So they will mass the troops over there and then, you know, block any... And what will then the United States in particular... The United States is my country. Yeah. I want to know what we're going to do. <laughs> I mean, if you lo if you listen to you know uh, what is being said like around Washington and you know in the news, I mean in the intelligence you know word is that even the military here are not like uh, no. not that you know because they know they have facts they know but it's the politics I mean yes. the, the politicians yes. that have another you know agenda so usually it conflicts with even the military so we'll see remember in Iraq CIA didn't see anything in in, in Iraq but yet. Colin yes. Powell was sent with a little, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, will it, it would depend, but so the know. next move is really on on NATO, correct? The next move is on NATO, I think, and you know, NATO now, you know, the Russians are waiting for NATO to uh, to uh, to pull out the cards now because you know. Uh, you think they're waiting? <laughs> <laughs> but they're getting prepared. Well, that's very interesting, Eric. Any yeah. final thoughts? And I guess uh, we should be very careful over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we have to push for peace. We have to push I for know, peace. I know, but I don't understand. There is no push for peace in this country. Zero. That I, that's what, every day I wake up and I think, this is hopeless. Nobody, nobody is talking about the fact that this could have been settled. Oh, yeah, it could have been settled like I many know. years ago. We, the people knew, I mean, these two agreements, Minsk one, Minsk two, were clear about, you know, what to do. But, you know, uh, Zelensky, and then Zelensky, and then Zelensky, can he, does he control all these militias? I don't and think where, so. Where are we going? At the end of the day... Does, Gale does Zelensky control yeah. Ukraine? Yeah. At the end of the day, it's the Russian population and then the, I mean the, you Ukrainian. Know, the Ukrainian population that are suffering, you know, right. and, 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 but it's geopolitics. Good thought. I mean, it's not a good thought. It's a horrifying thought. But I think, I think from your research and from your intelligence, what you see is that this is a struggle between 
two big superpowers. Yeah, and then I would always say that when two elephants fight, it's the grass underneath that suffers. Right. And, and then it's like the Ukrainian The people. Ukrainians are the grass. And then Europe, even Europe is not ready for all that. Germany doesn't want to cut Germany off their... Germany doesn't want to, it's France a whole doesn't mess. want to. And then it could create a new economical order with, you know, the BRICS and, you know, Russia bringing all these... And you China, know, you're China, forgetting China. And then it's going to be... Disastrous for the whole the it's whole It's gonna be world. disastrous for our country, the United States. And of then America. for the rest of the countries. I mean I mean we I mean the US has a long history of waging war, so probably you know it won't be But we haven't be, won any any lately. It won't be that much, right. you know, a, a problem for oh, the, yeah. but elsewhere is starting, you know, yes, you know, right. inflation in Africa. Starting here? Oh yeah, it's even here. Yeah. So we have to find a I mean, I don't know, but it's hard for you big super i mean superpowers to uh, rich, you know <laughs> go go back once they already launched you right. know, it, will, it will take time i don't know it will, but uh, we have to be also afraid of you know nuclear, nuclear I, anything can happen i know anything can happen okay well and anything probably will so thank you very much oh well, let's hope that he won't <laughs> okay back next month right yeah okay great thank you you're welcome